Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday. TGIF, uh, you made it through another week and I hope you had a great week this week. We um, were very busy this week, so this this video is going to be a short one. <laughs> My last video was crazy long, but it's going to be a short one. We only got a couple things to talk about, a couple projects that we completed. Had to go upstate today. I just, uh, I came back from upstate. You know, when I come back, I got to take a nap, believe it or not, after... Uh, driving for six hours and then mowing the lawn and everything i'm wiped gotta come back and decompress my spine so to speak so i lay down and and then i feel much better after an hour and a half nap um when i was up there uh upstate in the pond you know for those of you that might be just tuning in i have some property upstate and there's a pond up there and there's a a, a very very shy turtle and when I saw him today, I said, I got to get him on film because I talked about him, but it's hard to get him on. And I got a nice little, I guess, a video of him sunning himself. And when I went to get closer to get a better video, he popped into the water, very shy. And I, you know, I was thinking about it. I kept, it, it bothered me. I, so much so that the whole ride home, I was thinking, how did that turtle get in my pond? There's no other water for at least a half a mile around. He didn't walk from another water play. So how did he get there? You know, I, I often wonder about this, like how certain, I mean, we all know like wildlife, like birds or ducks or geese or something, they fly in, no, no problem. Other animals walk there, but you know, turtles, they pretty much stay within a few hundred feet of where they're born or something. They don't really venture too far. And they were, very, you know, I was looking up, you know, because I was so interested in this. It's amazing how when we're born, the first uh, 10 or 12 years until we hit teenage, everything is amazing to us. You know, we're, we're just amazed by everything. And then we go through a kind of a dull where, you know, we're not impressed for the next 20 years or 30 years. But then when we get older again, when you get into your 50s and 60s, we're amazed again at things and it's funny how that works. And that's why it's great when you see grandparents teaming up with their grandchildren because they both share that same excitement about knowledge and things like that. Um, so when I, I was trying to study up on some turtles and over here, you know, when I was a kid, we used to have, you know, tur you would see turtles. You'd be riding on the road and my father would pull over and help a turtle across the road or you would always see one or a couple turtles here and it. I haven't seen turtles any, you know, in, in years, except even when I go upstate, you don't see them in the road anymore. Uh, the type of turtle we would often see in the road is called a box turtle. It's almost like a tortoise style turtle. They're not, uh, they don't stay in the water as much. Uh, we have one of our subscribers, Kathy, has a great tortoise, really cool ninja. And uh, that's a real tortoise, you know, one of them ones that live for like 100 years. And... I just love them. Who doesn't? What kind of maniac doesn't love a turtle? <laughs> uh, you know, except for maybe a snapping turtle. We have a, uh, I used to go hiking up uh, in, in College Point here where I lived. There was a, uh, an area that's kind of off limits. It has, but it used to be an old airport here. And, uh, you, you know, it's, people don't go in there. It's all fenced off for many years. And I, there's a snapping turtle that lives. We used to fly radio control airplanes in there. And there's a snapping turtle that lives in there that's huge. Now, there was a homeless guy that lived back there. And he told me he saw that turtle once. And he says it's like three and a half feet long. He says it has a head like a football. You know, huge. And he says, you know, it eats ducks. You'll see a duck, you know, swimming. And I've seen this. A duck swimming in water. Next thing, the duck goes on, gets pulled underneath the water. And that's because the snapping turtle, it's huge. And he's been there, they said, they, you know, they think for many, many years. And so I always wanted to see him. Never did. Um, but the turtle that lives in my pond, I just thought it's so cool. My girlfriend named him Stanley. So Stanley lives there. And uh, he's. I wanted to get him a friend, but I read that turtles aren't really social animals. So they don't really care if they have a friend or not. They're They're pretty much happy by themselves. So... Stanley's in my pond by himself. I just wonder how did he get there, you know? Anyway, enough with my ranting. <laughs> Let's get on to our first project. I was doing a poor man flea market. I know you like to see some, some of the stuff I come across. Found a nice hand truck. But 
Check this out. Okay, so I'm on my walk the other night and I come across a box and then it has a couple paint rollers, you know, painting, not the rollers themselves, just the, the whatever you call the apparatus that the paint roller goes on. And yeah, I have a bunch of those, but I looked under to the side and there was some tools. I said, look at this, look at this. So I pulled out the tools, carried them home. And uh, this is what I got. Look at, first of all, this is a, it's a type of, you would use this like a, ro you would use a roller. You would put your, your, your painting stick in here. And this is like a mohair. And it's obviously never been used, but this thing is just beautiful. This, the, and you could use this for all kinds of things. Stain, it does a beautiful finish. And you don't usually see these too often, but it's really nice. It's got a foam to absorb some of the, you know, the paint or whatever. So that's real nice. Uh, a chuck key that just needs to be cleaned out. A metric, set of metric uh, keys. And some sockets. And, and, you know, metric and standard. Six point, right? You can always use sockets for all kinds of things. So that was nice, right? A good find. But then I saw this in there and I figured, you know, the rest of this stuff is not really quality, you know, super quality stuff. But I pulled this out and I said, this looks like a nice piece. Look at this. Proto. You know how we all love Proto, right? So what do you say? Let's clean this up and see what it looks like. Let's get to that. Okay, the wire brush made quick work of that. And you can see there's a little bit of damage in there, but nothing that would make this unusable. And like I said, it is a 5265 Proto. Uh, we did oil the ball detents. There's two of them, one here and one under here that holds this in position. And you can see here when you put the, uh, here we'll put an extension on, you can see it. It holds it in either straight position or at one of the 90 degrees. So uh, this one is back in service. I'll be using this. I'm the one of the few guys that actually enjoys using a breaker bar and use them all the time. Uh, also cleaned up the key. This, this looks like a key for a standard um, hand drill. The problem is that they made so many different types of keys. And you know what varies? Like not just the tooth, but also the size of this varies. Sometimes you'll see guys grind it down and make an old key work for a drill they might have. I always wondered why they didn't have standard keys. But be it as it may, those are in the can. Okay, next up, a lot of you found the, uh, the punch board we did last time pretty interesting. So I pulled out another one I have. This one here is called a Charlie board. You can see here, and this one here was a little more expensive. This one was 25 cents, probably something you might see in its current day, but this is, you can see, it looks like an older type of uh, graphics on here. And you can see the thickness of this board. And you see the back here where the key would come. Remember the key came here and you pull the paper, or there was two keys and they're both missing, which is a lot of times you'll see that. This had the, uh, you could see here, the um, uh, 1000 Charlie board. That means there's a thousand holes here. And uh, the number and the serial and the operator who, uh, who imagine making this thing and squeezing all the papers. I don't even know how they did it. But we need a key for this. And I'm going to show you how I make the keys. And this one had a lot of winners. You see 176 winners at a dollar each. And also you had, uh, what is that, six winners at $5. So I don't know. I, I like the nickel boards better because, you know, I'm, I'm cheap, <laughs> frugal. So let's make a key for this. I'll show you how you do it. A, a while ago, I came across some really nice hangers thrown out uh, that had no coating on it. You know, nice. So I grabbed these because and you could see when I use it, I cut it here and here. And that's one st straight piece of stock wire. But it leaves me a, a bunch of other wire to use. So let me show you how we make a quick key for now, this. All you do is just take a piece of steel stock. This is about three inch in steel stock. Put it in the vise place this over here into the vise so that it doesn't spin around and wrap this around the wire like this until it comes all the way around like that okay now when you have it like this there's your punch key but now you just have to trim it out to do that we use a uh i like to use a pair of nippers now here with the nippers we're going to cut it to an approximate length here okay you're always going to get a little bit of waste but uh we'll cut it about here Okay, and then we'll cut it here and then go over to the vise again and straighten this out to make a, a key. Now to make the key, take that same piece of steel, put it into that loop that you made, place it back into the vise here, lock it down, okay? And then bend this back like this using, using this uh, 
here like this, okay? And there we go. Now, what you have to do is you have to straighten this out and cut it again. Here is another type of key you might find. And if you are ever going to make one, I like to bevel. Can you see that on the tip? I like to, you know, smooth out the tip so it just makes punching that much easier. Now, you see these keys came all different shapes and sizes. And they would usually, that's why there was always usually an eye hook with a piece of string. So what do you say we punch one of these out of here and see if we win? Okay, I'm going to go with this hole here. And uh, there we go. You see that? Pull this out. Let's take a look, see if we won. Eight, five, three. Now here's another thing I found interesting about this. Look at the printing that was done on every single one of these little pieces of paper. Also, how did they fold this up accordion style to get this in there? Was a special machine that did it? I don't know. But look at the nice printing on there. Look at the beautiful font on the lettering. And uh, you can see here, uh, that number here in red, two five 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 corresponded with the board you see here two five 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 so that if somebody had an old ticket that they couldn't bring it up and go oh i just pulled this out see you know they thought of everything back then <laughs> okay let's see what the back says here okay oh a little uh where is the university of buffalo located so i, I wonder what that is a little and 942 i don't know what 942 is but 853 is the number. Obviously, these don't, it has to end in a five or a zero to be a winner. So we didn't win. Let's try one more time. What do you say? I feel lucky today. Let's go with this one here. Now, this one didn't pop out because the board is so, uh, you know, so big. It would hold it there, which is nice. I get, oh, we got a one at the end, so I don't think we won. But 521 we got over here. And let's see what the question is over here. How many aliens were deported from U.S. in 1908? Right? Is that, am I reading it right? Yeah, 1908. How many aliens were deported in, from the U.S. in 1908? I wonder if that's the, uh, <laughs> I wonder if that's the answer. Okay, next up, a lot of you enjoyed seeing that the, this hammer tune up here, finishing up the top of this, but, uh, and wanted to see this just uh, cleaned up a little bit. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a quick cleanup on this. Uh, everybody loves a ball peen hammer. So let's do this real fast and just make it look real, you know, nice. Okay, we're almost finished. Uh, I like to film this. There's always a, a portion of our audience that is kind of the purest, I call, you know, that just likes things like this, you know? And I'm I'm partly like that too. I, I like it this, I like it up, you know, I do it all different ways. But you can see here, this is just a natural finish, you know? And uh, look at that. Look what we did here. Everybody loves, you know, when we take it and make it look like it just came from the, they don't even do this at the factory obviously it would take too long but uh this is just a real tribute to this design and beautiful huh i mean with the facets and just who doesn't love a ball peen ham what kind of maniac <laughs> doesn't love a ball peen ham but uh this is a big one right so we're gonna see about the colors what do you think i don't know i don't know i'm kind of torn on this i always you know, I was, I was torn between, I would like to get a cobalt blue, but the right kind of cobalt blue. It's hard to find a good cobalt blue to put in there. So it would, you know, but then again, you know, the warm colors, the reds, the orange, but you can see what we did here. All the facets are, you know, cleaned up and looks good, right? Kent's hammer back in service until we figure out what we're going to do next.
And we're calling this project almost done. Um, you know, I was I was contemplating a candy color on here. Then I looked through the the comments, and Brian, my buddy Brian McGuire, said, "What about a candy green?" And I said, "Oh yeah, that's the one." So look at this. Now I have to adjust the lighting because the, the lighting, for some reason, these phones do not pick up the green. This is a beautiful, rich emerald green. But for some reason, it looks almost like a teal green with some of the lighting down here. But let's take a look at what we have here. You see here? You see that? Believe it or not, that's a beautiful emerald green. But when you And metallic, no less, you know, and candy. But when you look at it here, it looks almost like a teal green. I don't know why, but you would love it in real life, I'm telling you. And we did the handle back here. So there we go. What do you think? You like that color compared to, uh, you know, the candies always come out nice, huh? Did first coat of linseed oil on the top there. And, uh, okay, so this one is, you know, it's still, I only painted it about an, uh, an hour and a half ago. So I got to wait and then wax it and stuff. So there we go. What do you think? Okay, so in closing, there's uh, quite a bit of work to the, doing those candy painters. You got to do a base coat of silver first and then a, a, a clear green or clear orange. How about an orange ball peen? You know, that would look nice. Clear orange, you know, that candy orange. Don't get me started. Anyway, I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks so much for tuning in. Take care now. Bye-bye.